Hey everyone, my name is Simon Mishevich from Optimize Accountants and in this video we're going to be talking about UK inheritance tax and domicile. And why is that word important, domicile? Well, we're going to go into the detail of why you might pay UK inheritance tax on your worldwide assets. So this is particularly important for people that are living in the UK and for people that are moving to the UK. If you need some online tax calculators, feel free to use that QR code now appearing on the screen and the link will be in the description box below. Okay, so let's talk about domicile and inheritance tax. What does it really mean? HMRC's definition is before April 6, uh, 2017, you were UK domiciled if you resident in the UK for 17 out of 20 years. Uh, from the 6th of April 2017, however, your UK domicile if you're resident in the UK for 15 out of those 20 years. And you could then pay UK inheritance tax on your worldwide assets. Now, if you're living in the UK, you're domiciled, you've got passports, you've always lived here all your life, well, you're going to be paying UK inheritance tax on your worldwide assets anyway. But there are ways of getting out of that and I'll tell you that a little later on, so stay tuned. If you've moved to the UK, you might want to do some other things to prevent this extra tax that you're probably not expecting. Make sure if you're thinking about moving to the US or the UK, get some tax advice using that QR code there. All right, so we've got to think about UK worldwide inheritance tax. And you have to pay UK inheritance tax within six months of death. So this is really important. So if you've got, if you're in a couple, husband and wife, civil partner, and you make transfers to each other on death, then there's no inheritance tax. This is only when one person gives assets to their children or someone else, or both people have passed away. Now, you've got two allowances that I want to talk about. They're 325,000, which is the basic UK inheritance tax. So if you're a husband and wife, you get two lots, 650,000, and you may get benefits from this residential nail rate band if your property is above that 325 threshold. It is taken away after certain allowances, so be careful with this one, but there is a potential whereby you each have 500,000 pounds. That means a million for a couple, and the excess is then taxed at 40%, which is significant. That's a huge amount of tax to pay, isn't it? So what I want to do, this is really useful for foreigners moving to the UK especially and thinking, well, actually my father or mother intends to move out of the country back to the homeland. Um, you have to be really careful with this. And this is a particular case. You can have a look at yourself research. But this is Amash, uh, Amit Shah uh, versus HMRC, the estate of Amit Shah, I should say. And this case involves such an individual. He was born in pre apartheid India, but had, pardon my <laughs> language there, but uh, had lived in the UK since the 1970s, making him UK domiciled. Had only been back to India a couple of times for short visits. And basically what they're saying is, hey, he's gone back to India to live, but passed away, sadly. And what happened here is that HMRC said, well, you would only been down a few times. There was never really in any intention for him to go back to India to live and the rest of his days, which could well have been true. So HMRC said there was very little evidence to support the argument made by the taxpayer's son in the capacity as an executor that his father had always intended to move back to India. So move back to India, passed away. Hey, that's where he always wants to be. Okay, a domicile form had been completed, but had been submitted to HMRC and in any uh, some of the information on the form was inconsistent with the known facts as in, hey, uh, my father went to India, wants to live there. But then some other information got relayed to HMRC, conflicted with that information, maybe something went wrong. Ultimately, the tribunal had little uh, difficulty in researching the conclusion that the father had not abandoned his domicile of choice in England and Wales. So he went to India, passed away. Hey, he's over there. That's where he's always wanted to be. No, there was no documentary evidence. As such, the entire estate worldwide was subject to UK tax. A painful, painful um, example here where people get this wrong all the time. Uh, Richard Burton being another classic example. Look at that case where HMRC equally won 
Um, whenever you have a domicile, it's very difficult to lose that UK domicile status. We can help you understand that. Uh, so get some tax advice, when, especially when you talk about two different countries. What to do next? Uh, some things that you can think about. Leave the UK within 15 years. Now, HMRC have stated if it's 15 within the 20 years. So if you only stay in the UK for 14 years and you leave before the 15 years, then you're not going to be subject to UK uh, inheritance tax on your worldwide assets. So that's something to bear in mind. You might want to leave the UK anyway. You might be in the UK. I'm no longer in the United Kingdom. I'm based in Spain, Marbella and the inheritance tax here is 1%. So go figure, I'm not going to be paying anywhere near the amount of inheritance tax that a lot of people are going to do. Now, that doesn't mean that my UK assets aren't subject to UK inheritance tax, of course they are, but my worldwide assets won't be, and there are plans and steps that I've made to make that happen. You can do the same. Other point is make gifts. During the lifetime, you should be making gifts to your children, maybe into trust, but whatever you do, get them out of your own estate. Use limited companies with freezer growth shares. Again, another good tax planning angle. And document everything. If you know full well, you're gonna be going over. And what I mean by document everything, by the way, is if that person was going to India, have it documented. I'm now going to India, blah, 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 sign the letter, date it, send it to your solicitor. I'm not coming back to the UK. Next one is to have a will in the country you're moving to. So I have one in Spain now. And it says, when I'm buried, I'm going to be buried in Spain, not the UK. Because even when I'm dead, if I mention the UK, HMRC can come after me. If I mention everything about Spain, nothing to do with the UK, then I'm going to be kind of okay, right? But you still need to document everything. It's not something that you can just willy-nilly get away with. So make sure that you get a good tax planner involved in the process of moving countries, documenting everything, and understanding what you need to do to avoid this inheritance tax charge that this family unfortunately suffered.